Previously on Roleplay Radio. Is that the right line? Can I go? Did you know there are snarls in the Underdark? No. Well, there are. Sometimes people try to use them to their advantage. Obviously, stuff seeps through. So, people have to move. But this is a give and take here. You want to know more about me? Buy me another drink and tell me more about you. He's going to do the uh, hair behind the ear thing. I heard that uh, Enya's your roommate. I do miss her. We don't get many folks from Vermeilen around here. As Lorene hears it's like, I'm sorry, did you say Vermeilen? That brings me back. I haven't been back there in, what, I was 13? Dad took us on vacation there once. It was quite lovely to see the spectacle of the city with no sun. City with no sun. Yeah, six years ago it suddenly got enveloped in darkness. They call it the darkening. There's nothing really much to see. It's just a grimy old town anyway. Why'd your dad take you there, then? Well, like Lorene said, it was a bit of a spectacle. This sudden magical phenomena that engulfs the entire area in darkness. Your roommate. She sent you, didn't she? That day at the bow's end, when I was trying to enjoy my time, and he pulls down his mask and you see that it's Dario. No, I was legitimately just eavesdropping on your date because Koss is my friend. Then explain this, and he pulls out the notes. Your roommate's been taking notes on me. Half of this stuff is stuff I told your friend Koss. You tell her to stay the hell away from me. I'm more curious about why. You heard it with Koss. The snarl thing? Yeah, the snarl thing. Griff, as you're about to make the turn to get the Fear Gale, you see a very familiar rabbit folk. He has been tied to a statue, the front of a statue, very obviously as a prank. People are like pointing and laughing, and he's just like, please, help, why, why are you all just laughing? I thought taking a Brismari class would be fun. You there, you, hi, I, I recognize you. Griff feels torn, but Griff also recognizes that the little bunny doesn't know shit. All right, Tobias, I'm gonna get you down. You know my name? Well, yeah, we met that one time. Wow, after once. That's great. I don't remember yours. I'm so sorry. That's all right. What? What's your name? Shelly. <laughs> As Griff, you just shot this. It ripples all around. All the eggs light up. And you could see the vague shape of a mage hunter growing inside in each and every one of them. And then all in unison, your same spell gets shot right back at you. And for a moment, your entire world goes black and you turn into dust. You look well. Feel great. Do you? Nope. How much did you have to drink, Griffin? <laughs> Surprisingly, not a lot. I don't think I had anything yesterday. I don't believe you. I, I want to say you flat out just fall asleep. You're so ill and nauseous. The room starts spinning that you just close your eyes and within a few minutes you're fast asleep. You remember being in that pool. You start dreaming about it and you start getting really restless in the dream, like you're having trouble breathing, and oh my god, no matter how much I swim up, there's no surface. And then the world goes black, and you basically have a dream of dying. Ah! You, you are... Ah! Like, ah! Where are we? F Squad HQ. Is everything all right? Yeah. Gary. Gary, I think, needs to talk about his emotions. Ooh, would he talk about his emotions to Cataras, though? Or no. Have... No, because Cataras is the source of yeah. it. Yeah. So yeah. we're going to zoom in on... Mistake heads back to F Squad HQ after bringing Griff to <laughs> the infirmary because she left some stuff behind and sees Gary just sort of sitting there. You okay? Ah. Uh, no. Not, not exactly. Uh, you want to chat? I mean, no. All right. But I, I probably should. I don't, I don't know. Uh, what's up with you? I, a lot, just a lot. How's your roommate? Um, I don't know. Oh, and yours? Uh, he wants to go on a double date, so now I have to set him up with someone. Oh, not that's not the double date I was thinking. No. Would you rather if it was the double date that I was thinking? I think so. 
Okay, okay, we can work with this. What? What? You're making a face. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have a terrible, wonderful idea. <laughs> Is it set him up with somebody that he would hate? No, no, no. Because that was my idea. No, no. <laughs> no, that sounds a little bit worse. Set him up and, and find a way to make him set you up with F squad or B squad or something who's in on it. So then your dates end up having more chemistry and sort of leave you two behind. I... <laughs> well, I mean, that might work. Right? Um, I don't know how I would be able to influence who he's trying to set me up with, though. Well, well like, does he have a starting point or anything? Of, like, who to ask? No! He didn't ask me anything! Oh. Do you know who his friends are? Oh, he's in the Lapa's Guild. And he's started a band. All right, well, Lapa's Guild, then we can start with that because Rosie. So now we already have an in. Okay. So then Rosie can help us out. <laughs> I don't really want a lot of people to know about this. Just Rosie and me. Now I recognize probably the easy solution to this is to simply talk to Kalaras and explain things. I don't like that solution. I hate it too. So we're doing it this way. <laughs> And you're sure that this is going to work? No, not one bit. I will remind you I named myself Mistake for a reason. You're really not inspiring a lot of confidence in <laughs> no, this plan. No, it's so funny no matter how it goes. Is it? Yes. <laughs> you realize I still have to live with this person after this. Right, so if it goes poorly, then it's just not a very good date, right? Okay. If it goes well, then it's a great date. For you and Kalaras. I, I, I don't have a better plan than this, but I don't like this plan. <laughs> okay. I mean, this is better than when I asked Shelly for dating advice, but like not by a lot. <laughs> okay. Well, the right thing to do probably is to just talk to him. Oh. Uh... Don't you think it'd be weird though? Like, what if I ask him and he says no, and then we still have, you know, the whole year? That's a possibility. It's also a possibility that, you know, you ask him out and he says yes. And then you're just dating your roommate for the rest of the year. Which I'm sure has its own unique set of relationship issues. Yeah, you're really just jumping straight into living together. Yep. So, you know, that that's also a bit complicated. Yep. But that's where the whole communication thing comes into play. It's really important to, to do that. No, I think I'm on board for the, the weird double date plan, honestly. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, I can talk to Rosie because she's, she's on board. So the way I was picturing this is Mistake gets to an empty dorm and she knows Enya is going to be back soon. So she's sort of prepping herself in the space. She has made some changes to the dorm She's added like, you know, foam or bristles or something around the door so no one can peek under to, to teleport in or out or anything like that. And she has taken some steps to snoop proof some of her stuff. I think she's using flour yeah. because she could probably borrow that pretty easily from Gary. She like sprinkles it a little bit on her things, on her dresser, on her desk, stuff like that. So if anyone came in and snooped through her stuff, she would see that that's been disturbed. She is making her bed every time she leaves. She's leaving like specific creases in it somewhere. So like it's imperfectly made such that if someone just tries to remake it, they're not gonna have that imperfection. She has also added a third lock to the door. So there's, you know, the, the standard doorknob lock and then there's the chain lock, which we've established. She's added a third lock that just locks the door completely shut so you can't open it at all when that lock is active. So she gets to her room, leaves the door, so it's just the one lock that Enya has the key for, and that's yep. fine. And then she sets up at her desk like she's been there for a while, like she's been studying. And she uses her earring one last time to see if she can figure out what in Enya's past traumatized her so much. She has done this for the last like 10 days. Yep. And she hasn't found anything, so she's doing this one last <laughs> yeah. time. 
So um, over the last few days, you would have gotten just a lot of brick walls, essentially. The most you've gotten is that she loses her temper often, and when she does, she feels very terrible about it because she causes destructions. And that's all you've really gotten. Tonight, you're trying one last time. You get a flashback of her sounding a lot younger, like a young teenager. What time will you be home? and you hear a woman's voice that sounds a lot like her. I'll be back in eight hours. Just look at the clock. The clock will tell you when I'm coming back, okay? Okay. And this is one of those flashbacks that the time is fluid. Yeah. So time kind of passes by and you know because a lot of voices interject and you zone in back on Enya as she's opening a door and she says, what do you mean you found her? Best that you come see for yourself, girl. And the door closing behind her and then just sobs. <laughs> As uh, you're brought back into the room, and it's almost like the thing that brought you back was the sound of keys jingling. And you please roll your yeah. wisdom saving throw, please. 17. No, you're fine. Earring fear is a little warm, but that's about it. Yeah. And she picks up her quill like she's been writing as the door opens. When she opens it, she immediately closes it behind her, locks the door, and then goes, You there? Me? Yeah. Did you notice they put a third lock in our door? Yeah, yeah. Okay, if you don't mind, I'm gonna lock it. Yeah, absolutely. I usually do. Her arms are smoking, like she is having a lot of emotional turmoil and they look like they're on the verge of bursting into flames. You okay? She throws her bag at her bed. No, no, no. Do you wanna talk? Uh, maybe. Listen, girl, um, I, I know that things have been a bit busy and you and I haven't had a chance to hang out much, but do you mind if I just take this here chair and like, before you even, can even respond, she's already taken the chair and taken it towards the door. Are you going to sit at the door or you? She wedges it like in place such that you can't open the door. Got it, understood. Um, what's going on? Would you believe me if I said uh, ex-boyfriend? Don't see why not. Then let's just say ex-boyfriend. <sighs> she sits on the bed and she, but she's very restless. Um, is there something I can help with? She plops backwards. <sighs> um, not unless you got a whole heap of water you can throw at me because I'm about to lose my shit. Um, <sighs> goes into the bathroom and like, finds like the, I imagine there's like a kitchenette in these dorm rooms. So she like grabs some sort of like cooking pot and starts filling up with water. <laughs> and then realizing that's gonna take a while, she grabs like a smaller glass, fills that with water, and then brings that over to you. And you know, leaving the pot yep. to solely fill with water, she like questioningly is like, do you, you, you want me to? She goes, ah! a bunch of flames erupt, setting her duvet on fire such that she runs towards the fireplace and just child poses in front of <laughs> Just pours the water on the duvet. Yeah, you douse the flames on the, the duvet that she left behind. Some of her shirt begins to singe off, but her leather jacket that she had especially made remains intact. I'm so sorry, this must be very awkward. It usually goes away after a few minutes, don't worry. And the flames just keep going and going. Mistake just stands there feeling very uncomfortable. She had an entire plan of how to approach this whole conversation and subtly get Enya to tell her things. And now all that's kind of out the window and she's just like, I, I have no idea what to do about this situation. To make matters worse, she starts casually just asking about your day. So, so how was your day? Um, I'm clearly not doing well, but I hope your day was better than mine. For the sake of conversation, it was great. Great. I also want to say that out of her book bag, since she threw it on her bed and you are presumably next to the bed because you just doused the flames. Yeah, yeah. You Probably could... like moved her book so it wouldn't get her books wet. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And when you do that, you see that one of her books, it's not a classroom textbook. It is a nonfiction book still, but it is a book called The Blue Flame. Subtitle, Mysteries of the Underdark. 
And that light doesn't strike you as a second year course that you saw listed in the course catalog that yeah. you got to pick from. So you know that this is not a class she's taking. This is more for personal interest. Yeah, mistake notes the book to look into it later. She's trying not to burn bridges, so she doesn't <laughs> want to, to be very obvious about sweeping through her stuff. Did you bring the bucket? I mean, she will go get it once it's full of water. Oh, thank, thank the gods. And she uh, dunks her entire head and hands into the bucket. And then comes out. Oh, that feels so much better. Thank you. Ah, uh, yeah, sure. This must be very weird. <laughs> That's pretty much every day here. Yeah, and then she just slumps against the wall, drenched in water. So what are you up to? Studying. Good. I'm going to join you in just a second. Sure. Okay. I'm going level with you. I'm having some some conflict with a fellow classmate, fellow peer, really. And I'm just taking some precautions here. Do you care to explain further? Hmm. Hmm. How, how well can you keep a secret? Do you know what my name is? Mistake. Exactly. You don't know. Okay. Well, you know what? This is probably for the best, because it has to do with your friend. Your friend Koss, from Silver Quill. I, I know the one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do, do they tell you about their love life at all? This is about Dario. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Her hand starts smoking again, and she just puts him in the bucket. <laughs> Does you it start boiling? Yeah. Yeah. But for what it's worth, Enya, um, if there's a problem with Dario, I'd rather know sooner than later so I could help my friend. Okay. Okay. I think, I think that your friend is dating an Auric. Cause, <clears throat> when you get back to your door, you see a pile of mail. You're, you're going through it, and uh, one of them is a uh, poem from Dario. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's not good. that well written, it's a little broody if you ask me. the lyrics to some of my, my camp song. <laughs> yup, yup, absolutely. Something along those lines. But among them, the reason why it's such a big stack, you get a, a congratulatory letter from the Silver Trope clan for being accepted into their team. What would their team name be? Is it just the Silver Troves, or is it like the Silver Trove All Star? Silver Trove Smashers. The Silver Trove Smashers are congratulating you on making it into their team. You specifically being Randall Rock Mover. <laughs> How did Randall Rock Mover's mail make it to cost? Is it just magic? I think it's magic. It's just I, magic. I think, I think it's, it's, it sense his intent. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's the Clockwork yeah. Owls and. Or, or, like, everyone does have a specific address, and even yeah. though Koss put a fake name, put their real put address. Put their actual address, yeah. <laughs> You get the letter from the Silver Trove saying you've been accepted. You get a letter from Nori, a very heartfelt letter of, like, close. Fury and the Gales are hoping to balance out the team. We have Xanther, whose specialty is fire. I will be the keeper, the guardian of the mascots, uh, with my specialty being earth. We have Will and Rowan, and their specialties are uh, ice or lightning. We need a wind weaver, and I heard you're taking a wind weaving class. And I would like to cordially invite you to join Fury in the Gales. Oh boy! And then on top of one. that, Captain Dapplewing's letter of her saying, uh, you know, how happy she is to sponsor the F Squad for the team, and a delivery schedule for your uniforms, and please let us know what color scheme you want by this date so that I can have the arrangements made. And just as you're going through the letters, your dorm room opens, and it's Kamira. Hello, Kamira. She uses every lock on that door there yes. is. That's a bad sign, I think. I thought you were gonna get changed. Hi. Hello. I got you a gift. And she gives you like a little gift bag. Inside of it is a hat. Ooh. It is a bowler hat, very fashionable bowler hat. Fully white with a black ribbon and a black flowery design on it. It's a peace offering. Well, thank you. This is this is lovely. I'll absolutely wear this. I know you're into hats. Really, just the one, but <laughs> I could learn to diversify. Cos, cos, dear, 
sweet cause. You're being nice and I'm not sure how I feel about that. She's pacing the room. She leaves her tarantula like on a table free to roam the room. <sighs> I've heard some gossip, cause. Have you been hanging around with my brother? Uh... That's a yes. Oh, he's your brother? No, I'm <laughs> sorry. No, that's not gonna work. Yes, I have. Cause... May I be sincere? Yes, always. <laughs> I don't quite understand you sometimes. I offered you popularity, power, and you said no. You said I can find my own. And somehow you've proved me wrong. And I never thought I would offer this to a white leaning silver quilt, but I've been keeping a slot open in our team, the Black Parade. That slot was reserved for someone, I don't know who, but all the signs are pointing to you. Is you that see, so? She like pulls out a letter. I would like to personally invite you to join my team. In fact, consider this an invitation to join our social circle. I love my brother, I have to. He's my brother. But am I friends with him? Not a chance. There's a good reason for that. He is not what he seems, cause. He's manipulative, he will lie to get his way, and I know him best, I've known him my whole life. So if you know what's best for you, you'll hang with me and my friends, and you'll stay away from Dario Shari. Okay? I heard that you wrote him or played him a little song. What was that all about? Um, it was, um, just something that was kicking around in my head for a bit. Can I insight check Chimera? Sure. Still 15. <laughs> uh, you get the sense that she really does not like her brother. Yeah. That is that is clear. Mm -hmm. What her intentions are with this whole conversation, a little less clear. I mean, she seems to be just inviting you to her team and trying to get you away from her brother. I think that's about all you can read is like anger and mistrust, but not so much purpose. Could you tell me more about what your brother has done in the past? Sure. You know, she begins to remove some layers as she just got back from class and she's getting herself comfortable. Ever since we were children, he has had a very uh, destructive impulse. He would make friends, manipulate them for whatever gains he was seeking at the time. And... That just grew into worse and worse sociopathic tendencies. Have you ever watched an ant farm burn, Koss? Can't say that I have. Well, I have. I was seven, he was eight, and he laughed. I think he quite likes setting things on fire. Eventually, he started burning down his own relationships, metaphorically, pushing everyone away, including his own mother. When I can't believe I'm saying this to you, but when our parents got divorced, he went with dad, I went with mom. Don't ask further on the matter, it's personal, but let's just say he made his allegiances quite clear that day. I would hate to see your positivity and your light that I sense within you, cause I would hate to see it burn down because of Dario. So, be careful. Him. Please do. I'm only looking out for you, Cross. And I really am hoping we can be friends. Hell, we have the same initials. I thought that maybe that would, was a sign from the gods or something, but so far, <laughs> we've bumped heads. And while I don't love it, I can at least respect that you have a backbone. So what do you say? I would love to be friends. I'll have to let you know about the team. Why? Um... What's so hard to think about? Well... Akasa's uh, going to, like, slowly start putting down other invitations onto the table. So, so yeah, there's a lot. I honestly didn't expect to be part of any one team, let alone oh. being recruited for m multiple. I see. 
fine. What? I, no, I, I'm sorry. I... No, no, it's fine. You don't have to join our team. In fact, I'll see you on the stadium when we completely obliterate you. Okay. She pulls out a sending stone. Emmy, Emmy, send word to Amber. She's in. <laughs> okay, I know how this is gonna come across. Okay, and I'm not a stalker. I'm really not. I, I, I promise. And she like goes over to her book bag, pulls out a textbook that you mm -hmm. just saw called The Blue Flame. This and these. She pulls out some newspapers. I have reason to believe that Dario Shari is involved in some pretty sketchy shit. Some stuff that happened in my hometown a few years back. In the dark. Yeah, the dark name. Yeah, how much you know of it? Uh, about six years ago, suddenly the mainland was covered in darkness. Yeah. And it was a spectacle for a little bit, drew in a bunch of tourists, which is kind of shitty. And yeah. now everything just sort of sucks. Nobody knows what caused it or how to fix it. Exactly. Yeah. Oh my goodness, I'm so glad I don't have to explain all that to yeah. you. You know, it has been a nightmare living there, a mistake. At first, at first, they hated me. Everything there is made of wood and thatch, and uh, people like me who lose their temper very fast and easily are not very welcome in inns and taverns and all that because for good reason. But to go from that to being suddenly worshipped overnight was one hell of a change. And why the sudden worship? She like looks at her hands. I mean, isn't it obvious? You don't know what it's like, girl, to uh, suddenly go from being hated to... Oh, Enya. I need your help, Enya. Come give me your light, Enya. How about some I silver, Enya? I'll have to do more than that. I hated you before the darkening because your fire just burned things down. And then once it was dark, then they're like, oh, hey, you just have light all the time. And she's like talking I, from within I the bucket. I sort of forget that not everyone can see in the dark. Yes, you get it. It was the worst. I mean, they were quarreling me. They were cornering me, throwing money my way. And I said, okay, enough. I, I, I can't do this. But you know people, they surprise you, mistake. They organized. Overnight, the people of Vermeulen came together and they came up with a sort of schedule. They said, okay, we can borrow you from one hour increments at a time and we'll pay you this much and we won't bother you. They came up with a salary for me, mistake. I was just an orphan. What else could I say except yes? Yeah, I mean, that, that sounds like they were just offering you a job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I hated these people because they hated me. And so I resented them. But then overnight, it, everything changed. And they figured out how they could use you. Exactly. And at least they were willing to pay you for it, so that's a... And I just went on for months, years. Eventually, the tourist attractions died down, and, and, and it was just nothing left but us poor souls. Crops kept dying, no sun, no money came in. Now, I mean, people are thinking of just leaving the village altogether. They have one hope left, and, and that's me. To try and figure it out. Yeah. Find a solution to the sudden darkness. Exactly. Which probably means finding the cause of the sudden darkness. You seem to catch on so quickly. Um, I'll remind you that I am more whole white of order. Yeah. I'm sort of all about the whole things cause other things. Mm. You have Professor Mershaw? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course you do. Sponsored me last year. Anyway, we have bigger things on our hands. Your friend? Yeah, how does the underdog figure into this? Is it because Vermeulen's directly on top of a snarl? Is that what you think caused it, or could fix it? Yeah, that, that is exactly where I started, researching said snarl. Turns out it ain't no longer there. Right, because of some sort of orc infiltration in the village that surrounded it or something? Yeah. You don't know how refreshing it is to talk to somebody who knows her shit. Yeah, and the Sharis! And she begins pulling out these newspaper articles that she has on the Sharis. You know they're in on it. How do they relate? Well, the parents, they were spotted around said areas. I, I couldn't find too much on the Sharis. I mean, they live there. 
Of so it doesn't seem that suspicious to be spotted in the area. Of course. So do you have something stronger to go on? And then she shows you the newspaper articles that she has and they have to do with just random buildings that burned down in Vermeulen within the year of this happening. And very visibly on the headlines, people died yeah. in these fires. There's no culprit that was ever found, but in every single occasion, the flames were blue. She says, the Shari family is known for many things in the Underdark, but one of those is the blue flame. None of this is concrete evidence, but am I crazy in thinking that somehow this is all interconnected? Why? Exactly. What is their interest in the mail and why would they burn down these places? Exactly. I didn't ask for any of this mistake. People of Vermeulen gathered their money together. They said we'll pay for you to go to school if you could just find a cure for whatever the hell cost this. And I've been getting busy over the last year and some change. And I have barely made progress. And suddenly I'm spying on people when I don't really want to be. Yeah, that's, that's sort of a step too far, isn't it? Yeah. And you've been caught spying. And thus you think Dario will come after you. Dario, not Kamira. Well, I mean, Kamira seems to be minding her own business, and Kamira is not necessarily gifted with the blue flame. Ah, so she can't do this with the blue flame thing. Exactly. I wouldn't really say she's minding her own business. She's trying to take over the school. But this Dario fella, he was in a fight in Furigay last year, and I saw it for myself. They can do it all right. And now this blue flame doesn't require oxygen cannot be extinguished. Whatever you set on fire, you can only put it out with magical means, meaning it's hella deadly. I don't want to point fingers, but I think Dario might be this person. It's not a bad lead. It's, well, it's about as convincing as the one I'm following at the moment. So, following? Long story, but it's a start. Okay. And she will proceed to take a couple more safety measures. She like sprinkles some spikes around her bed frame. Caltrops, that's you aggressive. Sprinkled spikes. <laughs> Caltrops. You don't sprinkle spikes around your bed frame? I've been too afraid. Careful with midnight trips. It's worth risk. Hey, thanks for listening and not, <laughs> not thinking I'm a weirdo or anything. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Gary, as you're working overtime, Catarus walks in to the Bozen Tavern. He barges straight, like, to the back. He waits till a waiter opens the kitchen door and he just kind of scoots in very quietly. And because I think this is cute, he goes up to you and, like, hugs you. What? Uh, uh, what? Hi, Rumi. <laughs> Hi. Um, not to be an asshole, but you can't be in here without a hat or a hairnet. Oh, here. Oh, no worries. Oh, great. He puts it on. He's like, I just came by. I won't be, uh, <laughs> so good to see you, Gary. I was with my LARPer studying and I realized I didn't even ask you. And he pulls out a little notepad. What are your preferences? I'm, I'm thinking real hard for you, Gary. I want this match to be the perfect match for you. I guess we'll start with gender. Uh, Who are you looking to date, if any? Oh, um... <laughs> Oh, shoulder oh, mistake is like, describe him. <laughs> Actual <laughs> cost in the background is just going. <laughs> you know what? We'll skip gender. That seems I, to be a bit stressful for you. No, um, you know, I don't. I don't have a gender preference. Oh, great. He writes that down. Uh, what about height, hair color, um, personality? Uh, I don't. I don't really think of people like that. So, so uh, just vibes then. Uh, pretty much. I mean, they need to be smart. Well, that's, that. that's about it. You know, he rips the paper. I love that. Vibes. My kind of guy. Mm, <laughs> not quite. <laughs> Great. You know, I'm going to set you up with the best person. I don't have them yet, but I will. Give me a week. Uh, um. Are, are you all right? Every time I bring this up, you look like, don't take this the wrong way, but a bit constipated. <laughs> Or in pain? Sorry, uh, that's, uh, 
I guess I, I ha- I'm not sure that I'm comfortable with the double date thing. Oh. But I'm sure it's gonna be great. It's going to be- No, I'm sorry if I, if I suggested it, I- No, I, no, um- I thought it'd be fun, but- I'm, it, it's going to be extremely fun. <laughs> I'm- You don't sound so sure, Gary. I could meet some new people. Uh, that's, yep. Ah. Uh, Definitely. I see what's going on here. Anxiety. I used to struggle with it too. Not to worry. <laughs> Not to worry. Look, take your time. You let me know when you're ready, and I'll take care of it. Mm -hmm. I'll take the, care of the location mm -hmm. and the time, and you just take care of finding the person for me. Yep. Again, boy, girl, anything in between, I don't care. Just vibes. Mm -hmm. See ya. Good to see you, buddy. Good luck with the study. Thanks. Bye. He just runs out the back door. Skips. Oh. Koss sidles up towards the kitchen and just says, Could I get an extra order of onion rings and also I'll throw in an extra penny for your thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> and we cut away. <laughs> what about you? How's Griff feeling? I feel like you should tell me. Because the last note that yeah. I have is, Griff continues to have nightmares about dying. Did we do Ooh. anything fucky with his... No, we didn't. Not yet. Oh, great. <laughs> great. Okay. The, the, the fucky will will get here. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> mm, me and Alex getting fucky. It's about time. Season two, Boogaloo. Okay. I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> well, I had to sit and listen to you guys flirt. <laughs> so among mysteries and relationships and alchemical experiments and whatever the fuck Griff is getting up to. <laughs> uh, I think he's in the infirmary. <laughs> he is quite firm. Between all of this shit, there is also exams. Griff, what happened with you was you met with Varel de Lang, who is, is, nurse feels wrong, but probably like the primary healer at Strixhaven. A nurse practitioner? Sure. Um, <laughs> you went to Varelda, and Varelda essentially like gave you a physical and basically gave you a slap on the wrist. Essentially the message you got from her was stop being a child. I'm sorry, You're she fine. gave you a physical and slapped me? <laughs> <laughs> she gave you a physical exam and sent you off with a, there's nothing wrong with you. She clearly is of the school of thought where only physical things can be wrong with you. That is exactly what I'm meaning. You've been feeling progressively worse and worse. And it's not just a physical thing. The first couple of times, like you said, it felt like a hangover. Then it stopped feeling so much like a hangover and it was more of a mental and emotional thing. Depression, fatigue, and then anger. Like, any little thing, you ever been in one of those moods where any little thing that happens, minor inconveniences just piss you off? That was me last night. Aww. I'm perfect now, but go on. Sorry to hear that, you okay? <laughs> we'll talk later. Um, <laughs> you feel like this every day. Things really start to tick you off and you're just in a foul mood most of the time. So that's what you're feeling the night before the exam is your provocation. Griff, you also, in addition to all these nightmares about dying, the recurring one happens to be the one in the well. Okay. The one in the spring of eternal youth, where you actually were killed by a bunch of mage hunters yeah. reflecting your yeah. own spell at, back at okay. you. And that that has that been like be... every other night you get that one. Okay. Mm. I mean, the one thing that Griff would say as he's like somberly walking out, do you have anything for nightmares? Something to... Yes, therapy. Now go away, please. Oh. <laughs> oh. Is there even a fucking therapist here? Jesus, okay, fine. Fuck me. <laughs> and he just, like, takes whatever she gives him, stuffs it in his fatty pack, hands in his tracksuit pockets, and just shovels on away. Yeah. Hey, I'm your new therapist. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna to cut to the morning of the exam. Mistake, Koss, and Gary. So the three of you show up to the Biblioplex and it is a bit chaotic. 
Are we going straight to the day of the exam? That was my plan, unless you had something else. Oh, know, I was just gonna say that we probably studied the night before, at the very least. Yeah, we probably did the group study. Yeah? yeah? So the group study, my question for Griff is, would you have joined them? He'll sit there. Okay, all right. If he's sitting there, then he has that, that one leg going. <laughs> as the rest are going on about shapes, because exam number one, it's about shapes. You start off small, you start with shapes, then it moves on to more complicated shapes, AKA symbols. Then you move on to glyphs at the very end. You learn that even something as simple as a, as a rhombus can have different meanings. Would you call me? Uh, rhombus? I think it's rhombus? rhombus. Rhombus, whatever you call it, rumble. Um, rumpus. <laughs> I like that... rumpus because it's like the shape is doing a dance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's trapezoid. Pentacle. Pentagon. Trapezoids, trapezoids also have four, four sides. sides in the shape. It's just that there's two parallel sides yeah. in a trapezoid and mm -hmm. two non-parallel sides. Mm -hmm. so, I should have said that in a Gary voice. <laughs> well, there's two parallel sides in a trapezoid right. and two non-parallel right. sides. Okay. And then the, the three-side thing is a triangle. Yes. A little more anger from you. And the three side thing is a triangle! <laughs> <laughs> um, and these are onion rings, they're circles. I'm gonna go over here now. <laughs> are they actually circles or are they ovals because they're not perfectly circular? Circles? Oh, it's, it's round. It's round, why does it matter? They're not perfectly ovular either, so. Was that, was that another one? <laughs> I, I think ovals. there is a difference between ovals and oblong shapes also. Oh my god. <laughs> so, <laughs> gosh, you got it. Um, well, I think we need an order of donuts if we are to fully comprehend the circle. <laughs> I can make donuts. <laughs> Gary, who's working in the center kitchen, walks back to the back kitchen to get donut ingredients. And this is actually kind of on the nose. Because Snout. Even, even if you take a circle, and you thin it out so it can be an oval just by a millimeter, it becomes a whole different meaning based on what you use it for spell-wise. You tip a triangle a little bit to the left, different meaning. Like, this is what the exam is about. They're quizzing the hell out of you leading up to it. Roll uh, any ability check of your choice with advantage, and you must tell me how it is you're using that ability to study. Use I'm using my charisma to have people just continuously teach me. <laughs> Which one? That's not a skill, that's an ability. What charisma? Persuasion, sounds like. <laughs> or intimidation. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think, I think my natural anger has, has helped the group be like, no, no, like you, it's it's this, Griff. Yeah. So yeah. My, my anger is inspiring them to teach me because it's clear that. it's clear that Griff doesn't get it, but it's the it's the fog of anger. That's clever. Uh, I'm move. using insights so that I can read from Gary's expressions <laughs> what or not answers are right as I say them out loud. The person who's not studying. Okay. See, usually Koss would have to ask Gary directly, which would mean that Gary would have to be involved in this, but they're just saying things that loud and looking at Gary while <laughs> the answer to number 32 is glyph of warding, right? And you just hear Gary go, <laughs> <laughs> he just makes a face as he's bringing food over, like, not that one. <laughs> um, Stake is using investigation to mm -hmm. compare notes and look things up and do all that fun studying bullshit. So the three of you show up to the bibliopex and Griff is nowhere to be found. It's still a little early, unless you guys insist on showing up late, but point being, uh, Griff's not there. I prefer your boy. Your boy's not there. Thank you. Uh, should someone go check on him? I mean, the exam's gonna about to start in 10 minutes. We can't get all over to Prismari campus and back, even with the carriages. He, he has a roommate. He'll probably be all right. We should take care of the exam first. All right. Welcome, students. Please remember to sharpen your quills and make sure you have plenty of ink. The exam will start promptly in 10 minutes. Any last minute uh, crunch study time can be done now. I will turn my head. <laughs> Why would she have to turn her head for all studying? I don't know. That's very confusing. <laughs> Honesty. Is it, is it the implication that we weren't studying up until right now? I mean, one of us wasn't. <laughs> I don't think I need to study. I'm also not studying I right now. I don't think you do either. <laughs> you're, ver you're very smart. Thank you. You're very smart and you are worthy of love, Gary. Don't need to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mistake. You get a tap on the shoulder. 
uh, assuming she's still with the others, she's assuming their lack of panic means it's not a problem, and just sort of slowly turns. <laughs> it's your roommate. Hi. Hello? Can I sit with y'all? Oh. Thanks. And she sits pointedly next to you, specifically. Ah, uh, any particular reason? Oh, just, you know, spend a lot of time doing what I'm doing, and you realize you haven't really made that many friends. I relate to that a lot. Oh. Cos, you have like a million friends. Yep, this year. Last year it was spending a ton of time on the play. Oh, hi. Uh, I know you. You make my onion rings. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, I'm Gary. Yeah, hi, Anya. Just to be sure, you're, you're not still doing the thing that we talked about before, right? A little bit. <laughs> you really probably shouldn't be doing that. Let's talk about it after the exam. Oh, right. Speaking of which, all that research also got in the way of my studies, so I'm freaking out. Okay, shapes. Shapes. How bad can shapes be? Right? It can't be that bad. They got can't this. Be. Thank you. Take inspiration, Anya. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And we cut away for a sec to Griffin. This morning, you have yet. No, no, that's too too comfortable and deep of a slumber. You have a restless sleep. Huh? Okay. He's doing the thing where cats, <clears throat> lions, run in their sleep. <laughs> yep. So, you have a dream this morning, um, very similar to the others, with one development. You wake up, and once again you feel like you're surrounded by water, nothing new. Part of you might even lucid dream a little bit of like, oh, I know what this is, here we go. Except, previously you were able to swim. This time, when you try to move, you realize you are encased. Anywhere you try to move, there's a wall. 360, and above and below. How does that make Griff feel? Not good. Yeah, like a kitty in a cage. No, like a lion in a cage. Like a cat in a bathtub. <laughs> like, whoa, whoa. like a cat in a tub. And, um... It feels claustrophobic. Oh yeah, but you might even try to crawl your way out of it, you can't. Eventually, you hear a little crack in the wall, if you will, and some light shines in your face as that light gets bigger and the wall begins breaking apart and expanding a little. And you see your own face staring back at you, a doppelganger of yourself has broken you out of this shell. And yeah, there might be a moment of like, what the fuck? Uh, it's very surreal. And your other self doesn't even speak to you. All he does is wind himself up and shoots bright light your way. Everything goes black and you wake up and you're in bed and you're sweating. And you realize the time. It is five minutes till exam time. When he startles awake, I like the idea of him doing sword burst. Oh, oh yeah. Punctures the mattress, down feathers everywhere, because he has a comforter. Of course. Mm. And there's a note on Quintilian's bed. It says, hey, Rumi, tried to wake you. You growled, got scared and left. <laughs> Q, P.S. Prepared your outfit for the day, and he just has it neatly folded <laughs> at the foot of your bed. This guy is trying really hard to be on your good side. What tracksuit is it? And you have all the colors you can pick from. It will be there. I mean, it's it's red and blue because it's Prismari. He doesn't know me that well. <laughs> it's not a Prismari kind mm -hmm. of day. <laughs> We cut back to the biblioplex in the lecture hall. One minute till exam time. Gather your final thoughts. We are about to start. And once again, that empty chair near you guys. No grip. Uh, um, Cost is going to conjure up pigment. Pigment just like wraps themselves up around Cost's arm, and then Cost whispers to them. Hey, could you go find our friend Griff? Check on him if he's still sleeping. Ooh. Great, thank you. Very good. They. Pat Pigman's head and then wipe it off on their robes. 
Pinkman flies out a window. Mm -hmm. Professor Sharpie is like, oh, thank you, stupid silver trove. Everybody, please get rid of your mascots now. No cheating. And then you hear a bunch of, ah, and a bunch of people send their mascots away. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I like that everyone is like summoning and then sending their mascots away instead of just unsummoning. There's like a mass exodus of mascots. Yeah, they're all chilling <laughs> in the lawn somewhere. And the clock strikes 8 a.m. Professor Mavin the Sharpie rings a bell. And now we start. Griff, you're running late. And you know this. Mm, he's gonna run. Okay. Fuck, 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 <laughs> fuck, 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 fuck. He's been cursing a lot. Fuck, fuck, because he's mad. Fuck, yeah. fuck, 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 fuck. It's all a study for nothing and shapes and the ovals. <laughs> he lets out a daunting roar. And as you're letting out that daunting roar, you were going so fast that you don't realize the little gray shadow scurrying by perpendicular to your path. Can you roll a dexterity saving throw, please? Poor bunny. Uh, it is a five all day. Perfect. That is exactly what I wanted. You trip on this rabbit folk. You both roll on over the ground, not on the top of each other, just like you just roll and you just hear, oh shit, shit, shit. Oh, oh, oh God, of course. Shelly! <laughs> Shelly! Oh my goodness! Thank Jeez. goodness! Thank goodness! Um, Rabbit! That does, does it. He hides behind your foot. Please, Shelly, help me! Help me! Please, hide what? me! Hide me! Okay. You see a pair of Chris Mari students run up and come to a halt within 10 feet of you, sizing you up and down, hesitating. A boy and a girl, both blonde, they look very similar to each other. The girl's dressed in red Prismari clothing and the boy's dressed in blue Prismari clothing. They like look at each other, look at you, look at Toby. Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Burton, sir. Our business is with the rabbit folk. Can we have them? And little Toby's just, no, don't, 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 please. They want to tie me up to the bottom of a canoe and have me ride down the scriptorium. Well, that sounds like fun. No, I'm, I could drown. I just was kidding. They both start kind of pacing around you, trying to circle you. Uh, huh. You seem really interested in, in our rabbit folk friend over here. Oh, uh, we're just joshing with him, says uh, uh. the girl. It's like, this is my brother William. I'm Rowan. You can call me Row. We're big fans of you. Well, and if you're such big fans, and if this is just a Josh, then why don't you get on out of here? Oh, Let no. me hang out with my little buddy. Over See, here. that's not how things work. No, no, no. Oh. Your little buddy. What year are they? They're going to be year three. That makes sense. Year three. Yeah, okay. they take the exams on different days. So yeah, Toby yeah. also doesn't have an exam. They look roughly your age. Toby? Yeah. If I unzip my tracksuit, can he hop in? Oh, God. You can ask him. So, Toby. Yeah. In my experience with you, you're, you're more of a friend than a fighter. So, why don't you? I just hop on in here. He just dips his jacket a bit. I mean, oh, I don't know. I mean, that's a bit awkward, isn't it? And then you just see uh, Ro, the girl, some lightning comes out of her mouth like she's taunting him. And like, oh, shit, no, no, no. And he, and he can zip himself in there. A couple of rabbit ears just pop out mm -hmm. of your collar like a boat. You know, it seems my friend doesn't really feel like this is much of a Josh. And, you know, I'm late for my exam, so I'm just going to go. As you try to walk away, you hear some whispers behind you as the siblings are bickering. Like, what do you do? What do you do? I don't know. And then suddenly, a wall of ice erupts 10 feet away from you, blocking your path. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. We can't. I thought, I, I thought you were my fans. Fans don't do that. Well, fans of you, not a mm. swift foot. And what do you do to you? They look at each other and like, you know what? We've talked enough. Are you gonna hand him over or we're gonna have to take him? Okay. He's just gonna go for Fireball as a level three spell. <laughs> Why not? Absolutely. It's exam day. Absolutely you do. I just like the idea of, he's just standing there facing them with the bunny ears coming out, little bunny eyes. Mm -hmm. And a trembling front torso because of the rabbit and his two hands 
really just starting to power up and get really bright and warm. It's been a really long bit of time for me. I, I, at this point, time is a concept. I don't know how many days have passed, but a lot. This is not going to be a good day for you. And he throws it. It's almost in slow motion as it's in the air. Students scurry back, freaking out, seeing all of this. And before Will and Ro can even duck out of the way, the fireball hits the entire bridge. Can you roll me some damage, please? I would love to. <laughs> Ro gets hit with the fire, and she's got her cloak that she like put over herself. The fire burns through the cloak. You see her emerge, full of soot and some burn And Griff stars. is walking towards them. And she slowly gets up staring at you as you're walking towards her and she realizes her brother whose specialty was ice is down and she's just pissed the fuck off and she casts thunder wave yeah baby Rick's gonna get in trouble oh, hey, they were fighting on campus <laughs> as she realizes her thunder wave should have pushed you back and should have damaged you but all it did was shove you and, and grip walk. Griff comes up. So Can the thunder wave make his mullet staticky and stand up? Oh. <laughs> How is Toby doing? Griff, oh right? shoot! He needs he's, to make a ton of Yeah, he's grow. inside. To... Oh, that one! Griff was walking stubbornly towards them. Ro casts the thunder wave. It barely grazes him. His tracksuit gets unzipped, and Toby just flies out and he's trying to hold on to the tracksuit, but he gets thrown away. You wanna let him grab my tail? Sure. He grabs onto your tail. <laughs> ah! <laughs> you get one more thing to do. Want to go back to this exam? What did you want to do with and it? He picks her up with one hand and says, Of all the F Squad, me? Me? You wouldn't do it. Mm. Throws her. Like, off just the off no, the no, bridge? No, 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 it throws her down. No, please. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna throw her off the bridge. I'm not gonna kill people. Fireball is a kill people kind of spell. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. Fine. So Pigment still hasn't caught up with Griff, apparently. Yeah. Pigment sees it all. Uh, Pigment got stuck on the other side of the ice wall. Now a so, very colorfully painted ice wall. Yeah, yeah. I think Pigment's watching <laughs> above the wall, but mm -hmm. Griff doesn't know this. And we're gonna cut away from that for a second. Meanwhile, exam part one. <laughs> I got a 10. <gasps> I got a 13. I'm getting the sense that I might want to use one of my rerolls here. I got a good. 9. <laughs> oh <good>. no! <laughs> Dare I ask? Heck yeah! Da, da, da. yeah. Fuck, Investigation yeah, expertise. Revenge, yeah, thy name yeah. is mistake. Mistake. You pass the exam, part one. Haas and Gary. You have to fight the teacher. <laughs> Haas and Gary, you fail this part of the exam. Only this part. And then comes part two. This was Casa's mistake for looking to Gary who did not study for whether they were getting things correct or not. Yeah. I think Koss actually might be checking in with Pigment, like oh. stop and look at what's happening. And if they see what's happening and that like there's a fight going down, they might have a moment of like, uh, do I have to leave the exam? So Griff, you've just downed a person. You downed Will, you picked up his sister, you, you growled at her, and then you threw her on the ground. She immediately runs over to her brother. She's like, Will, Will, wake up, wake up. And he's gonna go over to Toby. You monster, she screams. Monster. When you hear that, it triggers something. Uh oh. It triggers something bad. You remember your father. You remember everyone who's looked down on you your whole life. The words sting. She's like, how dare you? Are you, are you insane? But what you're hearing, is you stupid fucking lunatic. You're hearing this on a level that is so much worse than it actually is. Pikmin is hearing, how, how could you? This is my brother. He was just, we were just joshing, we said. Well, that's what Pikmin is hearing. Griffin is hearing, of course. You can't be trusted. You're too dangerous to be around. You should be locked up. What do you do? He's trying to walk away. 
at least to Toby, but if he's hearing all this, then he's going to try to walk away. The ice wall breaks. Standing behind it is Professor Zaphi. And of course, a very familiar looking water elemental, colorful water elemental, just kind of hovering above Zaphi. What the hell's going on here? I don't even know if he hears him. Professor, thank goodness. Thank goodness you're here. Do you have a potion of healing? And then Professor Zaphir just chucks one at her. This, this lunatic, down William. He's, you're gonna hear about this from our, from our parents. And what you are hearing, this fucking monster needs to be put away for good. We will see our revenge. He hasn't heard the end of us. And Professor Zaphir goes up to you like, this true? Burning him? Did you do this? They were gonna fucking trounce Toby. I tried to talk my way out of it. And so you down them? What the hell's wrong with you? But you are hearing, you goddamn useless piece of shit. How fucking dare you in my school? I'm gonna kick your ass right now. Everybody else is hearing, come on, man, are you serious? On, on exam day, you're gonna pull this. Come on, you're gonna give me a headache. <laughs> I know what you're trying to do. Give me one good reason not to blast your ass right now. One good reason. And I, I, I think Griff starts to cry. Really? He can't fucking take it. You see him rear back to start to hit Zaphi. And I, I, I don't think Griff has it in him to hit Zaphi. I don't see that for him, Griff. But you do make a fist. Oh, he's fucking, yeah. Raises it up and it's like glowing red. You see the struggle. What are you doing? But you heard, yeah, try. And Toby is also just being like, Shelly, Shelly, please don't. If he hears that, if he hears Shelly, I think Shelly's a good trigger word. <laughs> Shelly's a trigger word where it doesn't, where he doesn't do it. Please don't. You see the little paw on the really angry hand and then the, the Shelly. Shelly, please, please don't. And now you're just hearing Shelly. That's him de-escalating and that's when he starts to head down, arms down, and like he takes his ring off even though he didn't cast Chromatic Orb. Throws it in his bag. And he's, he's just crying. And Zaphi looks at you and says, have your eyes always been like that? And both Toby and Zaphi can see that your eyes have turned purple. Hmm. Griffin, have you been to the nurse recently? She told me to get some therapy. She? So for real? And I got some lavender tea. Chased. Yep, I can put the pieces together. Yep. What do you mean, purple eyes? Griff, you want to come with me? He doesn't say anything. Come, on, let's take a walk. You, rabbit. Huh? What? Uh, I should probably get to my class. Nope, you're involved now. Go get this boy some more of that lavender tea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and he just like runs away. <laughs> Meanwhile, there is like a 15 minute break between the two exams so people can get some water and then Pikmin comes flying back into the scene as Professor Mavinda gives everybody the five minute warning. Exam number two is gonna start. So, Cosmic can um, see through Pikmin's eyes. Ooh. And I think they just left as soon as the break happened. They don't need to wait for Pigman to come back to them. They, they're just gonna go to deal with this and they're gonna tell Mistake and Gary that Griff is in a, a conundrum. It seems like he's dealing with some stuff. I'm gonna go help him out with that. Uh, should we all go? If you want, it's... I mean, there's still the exam. I don't know how long it's gonna take. I... I'm not gonna do well on this next part. I already know that much, so um, it's not really much of a loss for me. I feel like we should 
take it? Uh, how about this? Uh, we can stay here, but if you figure out that we really should be there, you can just like send picnic against windows or something as a signal. Okay. Sounds good. It's a good idea. I mean, if you want to take my exam for me or something, that, that would be cheating, you know. Uh, Anyways, bye. I can't duplicate myself. I mean, I'd have to like... They're, they're gone. Can you do that, actually? Can you disguise, <laughs> disguise yourself, duplicate yourself, and then undisguise yourself so your duplicate looks like someone else? Only with a disguise kit. I don't think with magic. <laughs> so, Gary and Mistake are staying. I feel like it's more dramatic this way. Yeah. I mean, I'm really hoping that Gary fails, but I want him to fail by taking the exam, that's not by skipping the exam. Feel like you know Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us again this week. This episode was recorded in Watertown, Massachusetts, also known as the traditional land of the Pekoset and Nanantum peoples. I'd like to give a huge thank you to all of the talented musicians that helped bring this podcast to life with their amazing music. We've provided a link to their web pages in the description. I would also like to thank our talented players, Tyler Rubin, Rin Garnett, Michael Yang, and Nikki Aguilar Thompson. This story would not be the same without their wonderful creativity. I've been your host and DM, Alex Aguilar Thompson, and I hope to see you here again next week for another episode of Roleplay Radio. <laughs> <laughs>